In 2016, after Trump was elected, a lot of people in my company were distraught, to put it lightly. People couldn't focus on work, folks were in shock, the company wasn't really doing anything to help. So I reached out to Human Resources and asked if I could facilitate a conversation. They said yes, but they re reminded me that our company was nonpartisan, so I should focus more on empathy and less on Trump. Focusing on empathy and understanding different viewpoints is a great intention, but you know what they say about good intentions. That conversation worked really well for some folks, folks who looked like me, who had a lot of privilege, whose identity wasn't under attack. I could tell that it wasn't working for everybody in the room, but I didn't know what to do to fix it. After we wrapped up, a few of the people stuck around and continued talking. They were mostly women, LGBTQ people, people of color. They were talking about what they wished the facilitated discussion was like, all of the topics that I didn't make room for, some of the ways that I made things worse. And even when you try to graciously accept feedback, it can be hard to put in the time above and beyond your job responsibilities to try to do something good and be met with nothing but criticism. But I stuck around with them, and I listened, and apologized, and thanked them for their feedback. And then, when I was facilitating the next discussion in a couple of days, I opened up by telling everybody that this wasn't a space for rationalizing and trying to understand the election or other voters. It was a space for being open about our own feelings. And when I said that, the group dynamic shifted. There were a couple of questions at the start about what I meant, mostly by the kinds of folks who looked like me, who maybe didn't want Trump to be elected, but who still felt safe and secure. But after that, there was deeper sharing. The conversation was much more powerful. It was deeper. It gave people what they needed. So I messed up. I made things worse. I got heavy criticism. And then I did better. And that experience has informed a lot of the justice work that I've done since then. I went to a talk by Robin D'Angelo, a scholar on whiteness and the author of White Fragility. And one of the things that she emphasized was that if you're doing anti-racism work as a white person, it's not a question of if you mess up. It's a question of when and what you do when that happens. It's pretty common for white folks to care about making the world a better place and then to start doing some justice work and then to say something racist or take the spotlight away from people who had been doing grassroots organizing uh, for a long time or face criticism and get defensive. And when that happens, it's common for those folks to stop doing justice work entirely. That's a reasonable reaction. After all, when you don't do justice work, when you're a white person who mostly hangs out with other white folks, uh, when you try to avoid any controversial topics, you don't usually get called racist. You don't usually get criticized for reinforcing white supremacy. So why spend your time volunteering for a group that acts like it doesn't even want to? Well, because it's important. I didn't facilitate that discussion at work because it was easy or fun or to get praise. I did it because I've done and said things that were racist, sexist, heterosexist, and otherwise not consistent with my values. I've bought stuff that was probably made in a sweatshop. I've hurt people. And I live in a society and in a world where all of those things are normal. There's blood on my hands. And this is how I clean them. Many of us know the hymn, come, come, whoever you are. But many of us don't know that the version in the hymnal took out part of the original Rumi poem. Though we've broken our vows a thousand times. Though we've broken our vows a thousand times. Though we've broken our vows a thousand times. Come, come, whoever you are. That is a hymn about atonement. Though we have fallen out of right relations, 
though we have unconsciously supported white supremacy, though we have sat back in apathy, thinking that there was nothing we could do, though we have facilitated conversations about injustice and made things worse and had to deal with criticism. Ours is no caravan of despair. Come, yet again, come. Come, mess up, then do better. The movement needs you. <laughs>